To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms. Hello everybody and welcome to a podcast of Biblical Proportions. Episode 10, The First Civilizations. After the world was created and the two human prototypes were banished from the Garden of Eden, they multiplied. But the two gods, Elohim and Yahweh, did not like what they saw from us humans, so they killed us all in a flood, except for Noah and his family. Mirroring the ten generations that connect Adam to Noah, we are listed in Genesis chapter 10, the ten generations that connect Noah to Abraham, Abraham, the first father of the Hebrews. This is a fascinating chapter, not because of the narrative, but because it's how the Bible sees the rise of the world's first civilizations. So after explaining the origins of the physical world, the biological world, and the geography, the Bible now tells us that Noah's sons are the ancestors to all the most significant cities and peoples in the world, meaning the ancient Mesopotamian world, with the Hebrews at the center. Hi, Omri. Hi, Gil. Uh, one addition uh, that uh, I want to follow up, uh, it's, it relates to our episode about the first creation story, the big crocodiles that we talked about. One of our listeners uh, said that a crocodile, the Taninim, is the symbol of Tiamat, so there's some kind of a win for the god is domineering over the ancient god Tiamat. So uh, thank you, uh, Lior Melnik. If you have additions or corrections, you can reach out uh, to us and, and write. There's a lot to talk about, so let's dive in. Oof, I loved this part of the, of the Bible. At first glance, it looks like a uh, mumble jumbles of millions of names and Kush begat, uh, Nimrod begat, uh, Arkbeck uh, Begot. Begat. To me, what's fascinating to me in this uh, chapter is I see it as some kind of um, imagine uh, looking at a picture of Times Square in the 1800s. So, so you see uh, the big building, the thin building there. It has no buildings surrounding it, and uh, the roundabout is is still not there. And uh, it's dirty. There's the dirt road, and the uh, people there are dressed like 1800 fashion like time stopped at the minute that you took that picture in the 1800s and through the things that are missing and the things that are there you can extrapolate on the history of that time but Times square it's pretty easy because we had written a history and democratic society uh, scientific revolution on the way etc etc but so here they tell you about the cities and places that either exist at the time of the writing or prevalent in their memory, which means that they were so big and majestical or legendary that mm -hmm. their name precedes them generations right. after they, their decline. Right, survive their names as, as, as origins of, uh, of great civilizations. Now that the geopolitical uh, situation has changed, they're still remembered as great cities. It's a tale of the origins of the peoples. Some of the names, St stuck in the Hebrew language for two millennials and we some of the the names of the people we still use as uh -huh. to describe like like the Greeks like the Greeks Bnei Yavan we Yavan, Yavan it's Greece for in Hebrew in Hebrew and even some funny parts there are names here that we call countries that the people who wrote the Bible didn't know exist for example China there's a sin here we call China sin it's obviously not China. They didn't know anything about China back then. So, so our word for Greece, Yavan, comes from Ionians. The Ionians, one of the Greek peoples. We call the Greek peoples Greek because the Romans met uh, Hellenists who were uh, the Greek tribe. So this is like a map of the world at uh, whatever, uh, 1000 BCE and, and before, mm -hmm. just all the great cities, Uruk, mm -hmm. Nineveh, mm -hmm. you have Egypt there, again you have Crete, Greece, all the way mm -hmm. up to the Caucasus Mountains, 
you get like a snapshot of their universe. Yeah, including the Arabian uh, tribes, desert people. Let's step back uh, for a moment. So after the, the flood, there's a new covenant uh, between uh, Noah. New and deal. The, hmm? New deal. New a contract. New deal, exactly. A new deal after the gods uh, just uh, reneged on the previous yeah. deal. Uh, wanted to renegotiate <laughs> the terms. Yes. Oh, you don't like it? I can flood it again. Yeah. <laughs> so from now on, no more flood, and let's start a new, let's start afresh, except you, Ham, Ham, <laughs> you're cursed. <laughs> He's cursed now because he saw his, father's, uh, yeah. his father naked. Privates. Yeah. His privates when he was uh, drunk, in a drunken stupor. So all of uh, Ham's uh, offspring are cursed yeah. forever. Yeah. And who are they? The Africans. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're the Canaanites. <laughs> They're the Canaanites. So here they're going back to the story of their origins and just putting it. Okay, we took this place from the Canaanites. We don't like them. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're, they're going to the be sentence, slaves. Yeah. Yes. God said that they're going to be a slave. So there's like a moral justification mm-hmm. for taking everything that they got because it's in the book. Mm-hmm. It's in the book. So gays also later on, they will be screwed. Here, the Canaanites, the Canaanites. are also screwed. Yeah, they got got. Now people go to the Bible to find the uh, justifications for stuff uh, that, that, that they're doing. But here it's as they were writing the story, they were saying, okay, let's put in <laughs> the, the contemporary justifications for what is going on right now and yeah. put it in the Bible. Yeah. So they have still had, it wasn't a PDF document. They can still edit it yeah. it's in Word. Maybe they, they wrote it as they uh, drove away the, the polytheistic Canaanites. Or uh, it's, uh, again, the same tactics that people use right now. They used 2,700 years back then. The local Canaanites were needed to be separated from Mm -hmm. the followers of Yahweh and God. Yes. And they had like this memory of of coming from afar to this promised land, even though... They had a story of coming from afar. Right. We don't know if this is... It's not really a memory. Maybe their culture... And their adopted God, Yahweh, holds in his own history the memory of coming from a thousand or places, desert places. But here there's also this justification of the reality, of the, uh, the geopolitical reality that maybe surrounds them as they write the, this uh, story, this, uh, all the names of the cities and the tribes. as some kind of an explanation why we yeah. are separated from mm-hmm. those Canaanites. Because... I think the Canaanites, maybe the northern Canaanites, who are more connected to the Mesopotamian sphere, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, the Aram, all those places, maybe they were kind of different, let's say, if, from the southern part of the Levant. But in terms of language and culture, they were pretty much the same, but with different approach to their deities. Yahweh was part of their pantheon probably some, some time, but there were also Baal and Ashtoreth and whatever, and Anat and o- also lots of gods. Followers of Yahweh needed to separate themselves from the Canaanites. That's why their lineage is from the cursed one. Right, and our, is fr- uh, our lineage is from the Shem. Pure, yeah, the pure one. So we are Semites. Yeah. So you have a different language. And there's a weird thing about the language because it says that from this point on, all the uh, descendants separated in their places and in their languages. Mm -hmm. But then in the next chapter, where you have the 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 tower of uh, Babylon, of Babel, whatever, they all speak uh, the same language. I don't think the listener needed the story to be that organized. Even though it it is organized in terms of uh, the different uh, generations. But go on. Yeah, but next chapter they repeat the yeah. the lineage of mm-hmm. Shem and by the way there was a time that everybody spoke the same language you know it's not the uh, breaking the fourth wall and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and how do you call it the suspension of disbelief and suddenly ah, what you okay there's no god <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh, just one last thing about that as as they're writing uh, their uh, justifications for uh, ethnic cleansing and the uh, perpetual war it's as if uh, a country would write right now its holy book and saying you know it's like basically did, did you ever read the words to the palestinian anthem no, 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 no. it doesn't say uh, israel <laughs> there <laughs> 
but we're all over <laughs> we're all over there between the lines okay like we are the oppressors we're the people uh, who, are, who are taking everything and causing all the all the troubles so they go a lot of steps uh, further first of all they put it in a holy book and the name names yeah those people yeah. that are right there you can see them they can leave whatever right they can be your neighbors their descendants really of, your the slaves, <laughs> of the slaves yeah. eh, whatever in the north yeah. of israel mm-hmm. more it wasn't uh, that genetically the, pure no it wasn't no and and, and, and culturally pure you had no. all kinds of people uh, because those stories were also written over a long yeah. span of time yeah uh, but as they were th- yeah. ethnically cleansing the place but you could have had and also and uh, sorry and it's ethnic cleansing but more so it's probably cultural, cultural and cleansing. religious cleansing yeah. Yeah. more than just like telling people to go yeah it's more it's very similar to what happened to the Trotskans in uh, mm. Roman history mm. they were neighbors but they're they differed in language and culture right. but they were neighbors because when you have uh, with when you don't have roads and that are maintained by some kind of uh, imperial force, then your neighbors are far, far away. The, the moment that you need two days walk to get to the next village and you don't walk there every day, maybe once a year, maybe for a festival, then they are the other, you know. All right. And so here, the cities that are named are the cities that everybody knows even if you haven't never been there in your lives and 99.99999% of the people have not been to these great cities mm-hmm. so they mention Uruk it might be the first human city ever. like in a proper civilization ever yeah it's mentioned in the book and this mention they call it Erech it was the catalyst for archaeologists in the 19th century to go and look for these places and they found this place uh, this place it was between the rivers then uh, later the rivers uh, changed their course and the city declined but you were talking about rome so that was the rome of its time mm-hmm. it's not yet sure how it controlled uh, all the different cities that were next to it if it was outright control Or, or sphere of influence sphere of influence or religious control but this was like a proper city that like 5,000 years ago that was built uh, one layer or to- on top of each other so you can see all the different mm-hmm. periods it and and they started the, as far as we know the the writing yeah writing system the cuneiform uh, writing that's like symbols yeah which they put on cylinders to measure uh, weights yeah. and a list of professions. Which they, goes they used the first writing ever, I think, that was discovered, the oldest writing available. It's a document written by an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so this was the first time that you had like clear social hierarchies and, uh, and experts. Mm-hmm. So you had the king who was uh, like also a religious king in Uruk. That was also the, the place uh, of uh, Gilgamesh. Yeah, the, the Lord of the Rings. So I, read today, <laughs> so I read today an ancient poem from 4,000 years ago. I said 5,000 years ago. It was at its height uh, 5,000 yeah. years ago, but it started much earlier. So the poem, they had a poem that explained the origins of writing, mm. that there was no writing before. Like you, like you didn't have the words to, to put into something. And it started like, that, like the hero there, he was like confused. And then the God came in, put in words, and that's how the writing was created. So this is a similar kind of story explaining how you got to, to where you are. And they had like the measurements. Imagine you learning how to read and write. It's magic. It's magic. It's, uh, maybe you can't really remember what you felt as a child when you learned it. But as a parent, you remember. <laughs> you can see. I remember because I have a good memory. But <laughs> it was, I, I learned uh, to read and write in the first week of uh, first uh, grade. And it was super magical. I, I actually felt like I had some kind of a new superpower. Not mm. superpower, but a new power. Like yes. when, you lo- when you learn to use your hands and dribble a ball, you feel and you... feel the connection between you and the ball you feel like you have some kind of a special power it's amazing it's like losing your virginity in some mm. for in some way it's like your 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 reality your cognitive reality before and after so or seeing the matrix 
Because you're looking all around and all these weird signs. You're like, hey, yeah. I know. You can interpret I it. I can see everything now for the first time. And it can last forever and ever in their perceptions. To also because other people didn't have uh, writings. They were special mm -hmm. at first. And then that form spread, uh, spread out. Even they, the, the, the heathens, the Mesopotamians, the, the, the losers, <laughs> even they... <laughs> realize the power of writing and uh, and reading as some kind of a basically it's a superpower by humans because and it's no co coincidence that the oldest text that survived is was written by an accountant because it's something that was born organically by the need and the necessity to organize society because it was much more than the human mind could handle to get the entire episode and all our content Look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms.